everybody, welcome back to the America's Army OP cast. I'm Dev Tots, joined as always by Dev Grubber. What's up? How's it going, Tots? Man, it's going good. And, you know, last podcast we talked about RFI4, and we didn't really have a chance to showcase this guy enough. We're bringing in Dev Caterpillar again. Yep, Caterpillar, still waiting on Butterfly. Still waiting, yeah. It's gonna hey, guys. <laughs> um, that George's getting old, but I better <laughs> Yeah, gonna round it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so what what he does, you're a designer uh, mm-hmm. on the design yeah. team, and you've been a designer for a number of years outside of America's Army, correct? I mean, For this is, a long time, yeah. yeah. I think I started in 1996. So longer than some of our players have been playing video games? I would imagine so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, some of them. that's an interesting thing because I think a lot of people don't understand how you get into something like game design. Like, <laughs> You know, like where did where does where's the skill set come from? Right, from, yeah. From game design. I don't think there's any one answer to that. I think it's different for different you know, people. Uh, for me, I, I was going to college for to be a programmer. Mm-hmm. Didn't really enjoy it. it was pretty boring. I don't know how you do it all day. <laughs> boring stuff. But uh, I was doing that. wasn't really enjoying college. At this, uh, Doom, Doom Two. Actually, I was making I was making maps there. And I saw an ad on Usenet, to give you an idea of how long ago this was. Yeah. And I sent it in, and I got a phone call back, and they basically said, if you want the job, come on out. So bought a $900 car and drove from East Coast to the West Coast. And kind of just been in the, in the industry ever since. Um, I guess I didn't, didn't, really, didn't re-answer about the, any questions about how somebody gets a job nowadays. Well, that's an interesting thing, though. I mean, that that, that is part of it like being in the industry once you're in it like you're 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 in for for as long as you want to be in there's there's a there's a good portion of the industry like like you just have to get your foot in yeah, yeah that's the way a lot of some a lot of jobs work in, in a lot of different get your get, but you just get your foot in the door get to know people but as far as like experience game design is concerned, yeah. like programming like i can go to just about any programming job out there you know mm-hmm. i can go and write bank software if i want to but I mean, you know, I have the degree, and I'm, I'm in the industry now. I've got my foothold. Yeah, you yeah. know, I'm able to hold it, and, mm-hmm. and that's that's just I think just something interesting. Like with design, like you have to really get your foot in there. Yeah, um, yeah. And and just kind of know people because it, it's just kind of one of those jobs where like the skill sets can vary widely. They actually do, yeah. And and now there's all sorts of you know designers. There's people who concentrate on doing or on, on doing on doing levels. There's very technical designers who are very good at very good at you know, scripting. Yeah. Uh, there's just different you know different uh, with, different uh, with, different uh, with skill tests or skill sets. Well, and as far as you know, school's concerned, we have a lot of guys. <clears throat> at least it seems like we have a lot of guys that went to Full Sail, and I'm sure everyone who's ever seen any YouTube commercial has heard of Full Sail. Yeah. You know, it's brought up a yeah. lot, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- I hope we see more of that in the future. More Full degree and, programs. Uh, is, um, what is it? Guildhall. Guild Hall. Yeah, Guild Those are the two we're getting most of our guys from. Well, know? didn't you say one of the local colleges was looking at adding a um, game design or game programming branch? Um, we I had some it, guys in UAH. here t- talking about it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if they're, if they're going to do it or not. Yeah. Colleges adding, you know, different game. Yeah, it's becoming more and more yeah. common. Yeah. I actually kind of wonder, like, what do they teach in those classes? I right. would like to actually take one just to, just to see. Yeah. Well, what I got what I got taught at Full Sail as far as like the design kind of stuff was very much just it, it was looking at like how to how to approach the the problems very elegantly. You know, mm-hmm. there's always there's always like that that little tweak that you can make as opposed to like to solve some major problem yeah that's a very good um, way of, very good way of looking at it uh for me a person that can, there's a couple of things i i guess i would look for if i'm going to it, 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 like if you're going to get a new guy uh first of all the person has to know games has to have a background in games and not just shooter games like i wanted to know I mean, board games to know um to, you know to know uh, card games to know games on the phone there's just there's just a wide range of you know, platforms now. Well, those uh, the extra credit guys <clears throat> that you told me about mm, started yeah, watching. Great, great series. Uh, yeah. When they were talking about learning to be a designer, they said the first thing anyone interested in that did, should do is make a board game. Yes. like from scratch. You a know, card game, rules. card game, right? A card game or yeah. a board game, some you know physical game, because that will that will force you to to, to design your game to fit into a very very small box. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty. Mm-hmm. That's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. And it has to be fun too. I yes. mean, like that's, yeah. That's. I think that's what get lost. Gets lost sometimes on people is that like, yeah, we can make all these changes and we can make this. We can solve this problem, you know. But 
does that make it fun? Mm -hmm. And when you touch one system, 50 others are affected, right? I mean, like, it's easy to make things complicated, but can you make it fun? That's the hard part, yeah. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been working on Proving Grounds? I started, I've been here a little over two years. Okay. Um, I guess when I got here, they had been in pre-production, just started production... I guess they've been around for... I guess the game had been working for about a year. Anyway, so yeah, I've been here about two years. Um, I started off doing very small things, and just just over time, I started taking on more and more more and more stuff. So now I'm more... I'm a designer, but I'm also a producer as well. Um, actually, a lot of the, the other... A lot of the smaller design stuff actually gets done by the other guys. I'm more of the overall guy now, I guess. That's one thing I really like about our studio and I take advantage of it regularly, is if you want to learn a different position, a different thing, Mm -hmm. people will give you small design, art, whatever tasks Mm -hmm. for you to try and see how, and maybe it never sees the light of day, maybe it's horrible, but you, the experience is amazing. Like, this is probably the fifth, you know, game studio I've worked for, and none of them have had opportunities like ours. It's Mm -hmm. been really interesting. There's, there's places, when I I worked at Sony, and especially especially when we started getting big, it was very much a drone kind of feeling. You're just Mm -hmm. a cog in the machine, you can't really go anywhere. So I, so yeah, it's it's a pretty good pretty good uh, you know culture here where you can move around and try different things. Hmm. Yeah, I always love walking into y'all's room where all the designers <laughs> sit. No, no telling what we're you know, what we're talking about, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where where all the designers sit and and walking in there and and just yeah, you guys are just going on about about something and I can and but what I love about it is that like you'll include me in the conversation. Like I'm just I'm just there to ask like some random question about mm-hmm. like how you guys want something done. And then you'll include me in the conversation and be like, "How do how do you like this yeah, system? Yeah. Or how do you approach this?" It's thing? pretty easy as a designer to just get caught up in your own mind and to make this perfect system in a vacuum. And it's like, "It's great. It's perfect. It's going to work." And then you show it to somebody else and they're like, uh, what about this? And it's like you never thought of that. You have yeah. to have you have to have outside eyes. Um, and the thing is, if you have a design, you need to be able to express it to a player. If yeah. a player can't understand it, who cares how you know, how great it is? Right. It has to be something somebody can grasp. And that was a conversation that we had about um, getting ammo off another player. Yes. It's never explained in the tutorial. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. you know, it was a very odd thing that you found out because you did it by accident or someone told you. Yes. Or you were yes. running behind somebody and that you got up. this pop up, yeah. 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 Grab ammo. Like this that. is kinda odd. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. Yeah, we were never a very big <laughs> fan of that, yeah. So let, let's uh, talk about just the design process and proving grounds a little bit. You know, let's we can go back to we talked about medic a lot. Mm-hmm. I think that might be a good case to talk about. You know, right? Uh, the right. way that kind of worked. Uh, Dev Doc, you know, is a, a combat medic, as I think everyone knows by now, or was a combat medic, uh, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> but um, you know, he wanted to do a medic a certain way, and he made the original implementation, and he puts it in, mm-hmm. and then we play it. And even though we're not designers, you guys come to us and say, how's it going? You know, how's it feeling? Yeah, yeah. Every, every play test, we're always, as a group, talking as players. Like, mm-hmm. not, as, not as designers, not as whatever. We're talking as players. Like, how did that feel? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Yeah, um, yeah. After, like, like I said, after each play test, we have the little meeting. And I, I, I encourage people to uh, talk. And sometimes I'll single out somebody who hadn't either, had, you know, hadn't said anything in a while. Yeah. It's, not, it's not usually you guys. but No, you know. we, we don't have that problem. We, no, we don't have that problem. <laughs> but, yeah, there's some people who just don't talk. So I, I try to get them to talk to. Try to get, try to get all the angles. Uh, for the medic in particular, which is still in you know, development, of course, the meat of the system is move the revives into the, into the medic. Right. So that was the first thing. There's lots of other things that we could do, that we might do, that we are doing, like what are we going to do with bleeding, what are we going to do with the injuries, how many medics, who can revive the medic, if anybody. Um, as far as the approach, it's very, very, it is very much put in, you know, play it, just get it in there and try it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always said, like, you can't make the game without actually being able to, you know, play the game. Yeah. Playing the game is the most most the, is the most important thing, and we get a ton of idea ton of ideas of how to change the game, and I think we've tried we try all of them eventually. We've yeah. tried you know, how many different enemy as, spots? As long as, yeah, as, oh, long yeah. as, as, long as they're yeah. easy to put in, you know, they'll be in the next playtest. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. 
And we've done this with the enemy spotted. We've I just some numerous features. We had like for a while. I think before you got here, we had limited sprint, and they hated that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've never been a fan of. I want to be able to sprint a lot. I'm a mm-hmm. soldier. I'm in good shape. You know, and I want to be able to move while I reload because to me that's one of the most artificial like restraints. Right, right, yeah. You know, oh, I'm Mm -hmm. pushing this up. I better really slow down. I might mess this up. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's so weird. But uh, which is which is odd you say that because just before you came and got me, I was actually looking at something of maybe changing how you reload while you sprint and all that. Not not that we're gonna do it, but we might. But something that that we that we might try. Well you know, I don't remember the game now, but I've seen it in at least one where they had almost like a quick time event when you reload. If you don't do it or you don't do it right, you reload at the normal speed, but if you hit mm-hmm. the button or whatever at the right timing, then you reload a little faster. Oh yeah. Well I'm not I know saying that would War has game, like but, that little you know. that little mini game there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you do extra damage or you know something in in uh, gears. You know. I don't think we'll go that 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 kind of route. No. Well, let's see here. Um, how about is there anything that we ever worked on that you thought was kind of interesting or even just absolutely terrible, but it never made it in for anyone to see? Um, little behind the scenes action. Uh, one of the things we had, which was never made it to the live beta. I don't let you know if it actually was in the closed beta. Was we had. We had a number of respawn maps, um, which was really a touchy subject around here, and I well, imagine was, it would um, be on the on the forums too. That was when you had downtown and Spring Street, and all of that was interconnected, right? Yeah, and it was they, one big respawn. It event. was huge, huge maps, um, and it was respawn and kind of in the in the battlefield kind of way, where you had a, had so many uh, you know tickets per team, and mm-hmm. you could do things to remove. Like remove, um, like remove the tickets from from the other team, and you could revive a guy to save your to save your team a a, a ticket. Uh, it was interesting, but it was an America's Army. It was right. it was just another respawn shooter in the skin of the America's Army. It wasn't well, that, it. You touch on something though that that I think is important to understand about the design of AUPG is that like. There's there's certain army values that we just kind of have to hold dear mm-hmm. when we're making the game and, and keep be mindful of and so there's a design around these army values. Oh, and, there's and so many respawn. ideas we come up with we can't do we just nope can't yeah. go that that route because of the of the kind of game. Yeah, yeah. and and respawn is kind of one of those things where it touches on the ar- an army value of of just not not leaving a man behind and and the, the, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't you get know. multiple lives. You don't you know respawn back at your home yeah, base. Yeah, yeah. Like we don't want you having that feeling. Yeah. Like I mean, we we had tried to you dress it up with with um, your various pieces of fiction, or like yeah. maybe there's a you know, chopper that that comes in. So it's like yeah. you're the next wave and stuff like that. But you know that that whole system also makes it so that your teammates are less important, right? Because oh, now yes. if you get shot, he's coming back. But yeah. now you know in a real unit, you're going to take care of all your battle buddies, mm-hmm. and, and yeah. that's what you're encouraged to do now. And with medic too is just another step in that you know I'll never leave a fallen comrade part of the you know soldier's yeah. creed and I think it's great I think it's wonderful that we do it yeah yeah I really enjoy playing our current game internally with a medic mm-hmm. sometimes it's frustrating because you go down right at the start and like oh darn it but um, it's a much it's a it's a different game than what's out on live it definitely changed the field to feel more like. A classic America's Army feel, I think. A little slower movement, a little more strategic mm-hmm. play. Um, I know we run into, we, I know we, we run into the time limit a whole lot, a whole lot more. We do. Uh, yeah, when we were yeah. playing intercept internally with a medic, many times it'd come down to either timeout or close. Yeah. And yeah. when you're playing it on the current external build, you know it's a two minute round. Yeah. Yeah. It's changed everything so drastically. Mm-hmm. Now before we go, uh, want to go ahead and just bring up one community topic you know that we've been talking about we made a post about this and oh boy that was changing back from server side to client side Mm -hmm. Um, there was a bug with the server side (laughs) hit detection that uh grubber didn't notice when he was doing it you know well all i did i mean like because the shotgun was already using it the back pedaling starts here (laughs) all i did was turn it on somebody else wrote that yeah um but you know it was firing a second shot and because of that especially if you had low ping you had a great advantage um, yeah, it, it was a great game for low pingers. Yeah, yeah. They were, <laughs> a very good game. Um, yeah. Uh, well, you know, we went ahead and we're changing back to the the client side uh, at the direction of our lead programmer, yeah, Phil Bax. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He feels like that's you know more weight to the shooter's actions. 
you're not going to have as many, I know I shot him, but I missed because on server side, the way it works, you know, that's more apt to happen because of animation change and everything. Right, yeah. And it's not perfect, but neither yeah. is you know, server side. Right. Yeah. Um, and if the day comes that we improve on server side and it feels better, we'll change to that. We want the best experience. But absolutely, right yeah. now we the option is still the there. Best. The option is still there. Yeah. Players right. can still set up their own servers. Sure, may or may not feel better. I mean, a lot of that's very subjective. Yeah. It'd be interesting to run a test. Maybe we already have. Well, with the, uh, with the we, beta team, we did that. You yeah, know, we, we didn't did. tell them we fixed we the bug, and mm -hmm. suddenly they're like, "What happened to the netcode?" And really, nothing. You know, they it just, was just fixed the bug. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it, it's um, it's an interesting thing because I mean, like most of our code was written with the the idea of client side hit detection and that sort of stuff. So it's it's been tested, it's been through the ringer. We know yes, yes. we know where it's at. Where this the server side, like we were hoping that it would it, it was properly tested, you know, but we we didn't know. We didn't know what what would have popped up. So it, mm -hmm. it goes to show that like there was something there and there could be more things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we want to leave it out there for people to play with and people to test with and you know, we'll we'll be looking at it and watching it. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely still an option. May still appear on some on some official servers. That's not a promise, but yeah. Uh, but you it know, may. it's pretty easy to switch that kind of stuff around on the fly when yeah, we want yeah. to. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Well, guys, we want to thank you as always for coming out, listening to the podcast. We love doing it. We hope you love listening to it, and we will see you next time. All right, guys. Later. Later.